The featured presentation is brought to you by Landman Productions. Landman Productions provides videography, photo montages, editing, instructional videos, and entertainment for all occasions. Hi, I'm Dan Henning. And I'm Tammy Henning. And you're, and you're tuning, tuning into in the, the Chuck, Chuck Land, Land Show. Show. My name is Chuck Land, and I've lived in many worlds, being a musician, veteran, animal lover, family man, videographer, and documentarian. Since 2005, my crew and I have documented over 17,000 hours of interesting people and places. I love what I do because you just never know what you're going to document and learn from each experience. And just maybe I can contribute to making the world a better place through my efforts. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chuck Land Show. It's been a while since I've uh, produced any other shows. It's been quite a few months. A lot of things going on with the family and uh, video projects. I got a call from my friend. Uh, he's the executive director of Play It Forward named John Shield. He's a good buddy of mine. He's also an attorney. And um, John was telling me they're going to be presenting a check to a musician named Dan Henney. So I saw it on Facebook, the flyer, uh, that Play It Forward, a organization that helps out musicians in need, was going to throw a benefit at the Redmore in Cincinnati. So when I read the bio of this Dan Henning guy, I was really impressed. Dan is one of the most amazing keyboard players and singers I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he's one of the best kept secrets around the uh, Cincinnati, Ohio area. The reason I'm spending all this effort and time to do a story on Mr. Henning's life is because he's very inspirational and I think he could touch your life. Um, Dan actually has a battery operated device um, keeping him alive, he wears it around his waist. Dan is only in his late 40s and I know everything that's happened to him has really changed his outlook on life um, and I just thought it'd be awesome to do a story on Dan and honor his life uh, for all his contributions yeah, with the music that. scene but also with his ministry you know I hope you're inspired by this story today on Mr. Dan Henning Dan 30 years ago and I'll tell you when I first met him the first thing I thought was is stay away from me <laughs> far away from me and uh, he came back the next day and and asked me out and uh, like Dan said we were in a in a downward spiral in lifestyle and so um, circumstances led to us being together for now 30 years and uh, 27 of those we just celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary on Friday um, Dan is probably the most uh, unique person I've ever met in my life. One of the things that probably stick out the most about him is his integrity. Last year, our drummer went and heard Dan's wonderful one-man show at Kenwood Country Club. He came back and said, you got to hear this guy. I've asked him to practice with us. He practiced with us. I was so impressed with Dan as a human being and as a musician. Late in the year, we were playing at the zoo. Dan was supposed to join us. We got a message from him that he was in the hospital, too sick to join us. Late in the year, we got a goodbye from Dan. And then, through his faith, his wife's faith, faith and the wonderful folks at Christ Hospital, he was saved. He's with us today. We're so grateful for that. 
That's awesome. What do you think? I am so impressed with Dan the whole, I, just, I don't know what to think. Dan is just a, he's a blessing, that's for sure. He's, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that's, that says it all. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I started playing music when I was four years old. My dad was a professional entertainer, and uh, I would go out to the jobs and hear him play. It was uh, it was something to watch the people respond to the music. And when I seen them having so much fun, I thought that's what I'd like to do. If, if I could do something to have that kind of you know response, and so I began practicing and, and working on a little beat up piano out in the garage. And uh, I think one of my fondest moments. Uh, was the first time I actually played out at a big job was when I was, I think it's around 10 or 11 years old, maybe a little bit over 12 maybe. We played at the Hillcrest, Hillcrest Supper Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played there for New Year's Eve and my dad wasn't there. So I had nobody to lean on. It was the whole job. And so that was one of my fondest moments. And then a couple years later, I joined a band called Rubber Soul. And we had the privilege of playing with some of the mainline acts that came through Bogarts in Cincinnati. And uh, that, was, that was quite something. Yeah, both of our children play, uh, play musical instruments. Aaron plays a guitar, and Amanda plays saxophone and sings. And Aaron sings as well. And uh, I just, I love it. It, it just seems like uh, what I had to work really hard to do, they just do it. You know, you show them one time, and they've got it. So I'm kind of jealous in that aspect. But... Um, Aaron has such a passion. He reminds me of me when I was his age. He has a super passion for music. has a super passion for the message that music brings. It's more than just, hey, I can play guitar, but he's he's interested in the whole package. What is this song saying to the audience? Amanda is just a phenomenal vocalist, and um, she's in that place in her life where she's really, really good at it, and so I've just gotten blessed to be able to play with them. We perform together regularly, and uh, it's a trip. Yeah. Um it never fails. There's always, um, at the end of the night, um, when Dan's played, if it's with the kids, he's always said, you know, it really doesn't matter who I've ever played with in my life. The greatest thing at the end of the night of playing with your kids, that's what it's all about. Because so it, may, it makes a big, it, it, memories, it makes memories. Yes, it does. Great memories for the family. Outside of just getting to perform for, you know, different kinds of people and, and different acts with Rubber Soul. I think one of my greatest moments was able to play for Christ. After I gave my heart to the Lord, we started using the talents and abilities for the Lord. And that that really is the most fulfilling. I mean, it's fun to play and entertain and watch people laugh and have a good time. But when you're playing for the Lord, there's there's this an added dimension that you know you're changing people's lives and, and actually touching someone in a real way rather than the, just the emotional music, you're actually changing someone as you're performing. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing with music. Lord, exalted, high above all gods. When, uh, when 
I gave my heart to the Lord, I thought, okay, I'm going to give my music to Him as well. And I, in my head, I thought, wow, I'll just, I'll just, just play Christian music. And I thought that I would be received just as well doing that as I was in the secular world. And remember, I was I was providing for my family with music. So here I am, no skills whatsoever because I, I didn't take schooling seriously. When when my counselor asked me what I wanted to do for a living, I wanted to be a rock star. So you know, they they kind of laughed at me and said, "Okay, seriously, what do you want to do?" And I said, "Seriously, I want to be a rock star." So when I got out into the world. Uh, right out of high school, I was doing well in secular music and making a good living, making good money. And so we got into the, the, the mess and gave our hearts to the Lord, and then I'm, re I'm still ready to go. I'm volunteering, hey, let me play for church. But it was just a totally different world for me. It was kind of like, we want your talent, but we really don't want you to express what you want to express to your talent. Just play what we want you to play. And it was really strange. It, it, it still is strange for me. Um, it seems like the, the biggest part of my ministry is still out in the secular realm. It's, it's in supper clubs and it's at wedding receptions and, and uh, country clubs. That's where people come up and it's always my music that people will they'll talk about, you know, hey, how long have you been playing? And I get to share the same story that I sh shared with you today is that, you know, I got into a mess that most musicians get into. And it was a dark lifestyle, and the Lord took me out of it. And then before I know it, I'm ministering the gospel, and I'm more effective ministering in that situation than I am at church. And so we, we uh, Tammy and I, we, we treat people the way we want to be treated. And we felt like we were black sheep for a long time. There was, especially in the Bible Belt, you know, if it has a, a lead guitar solo in it, it's of the devil. If it has distortion, it's of the devil. If it has drums, it's it's of the devil. And so um, I thought, that can't be right. God created music. You know, he didn't pervert it. God created it, and it's beautiful. And so, um, so like I said, the, the biggest force of our music is, is outside of the church walls. The church walls for us is just a fellowship where we get together and, and talk about the good things that God has done for us. Um, it's not used to preach at people or to to control their lives or whatever, or to scare people. The church is a safe place where we can get together a couple times a week and say, man, it was a heck of a week this week. And uh, this is how I overcame it. And we encourage each other. And then we go back out into the world, which is the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That's where it's preached, not necessarily at church. So for me, that's, that's, that's my spirituality as far as my calling. I noticed over the years that many people tend to think that if you play music outside the church, um, God would condemn you for it or, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a Christian. And I think that's just ridiculous. You know, there are a lot of people that hang out at the bars that are also Christians or, you know, they, uh, they need you to minister to them at the bar. I love how Mr. Henning thinks. Um, as a matter of fact, I think more um, pastors from churches need to think more like him and his wife. I said, what kind of church do you have? What kind of church do you pastor? My answer is always the same. Well, we're not very churchy. We're just not very churchy. So if you're looking for traditions and religions, and but if you're looking for a place to come, our motto is real per people serving a real God. Not perfect people, real people. People that are struggling, having problems, that, that can feel comfortable with one another about sharing those kinds of things. So to me, that's what spirituality is. Come, Lord Jesus, come. He 
People are always worried about looking at their calendar for tomorrow and next week and next month and they miss today. They miss everything that today has in store for it. Dan, my husband, has some had some pretty serious medical conditions. Went through a major surgery, has a mechanical heart pump. Um, we were pretty much residents for a while at Christ Hospital. And um, it was a long journey, and he was a very, very sick man to the point where um, Dan's surgery was December the 19th of uh, 2011, and we really didn't know that we were going to be, he was going to be with us to celebrate Christmas. And so it was a very serious ordeal, in fact. And Christ Hospital was absolutely instrumental um, in so many ways um, of bringing us hope. When I was first really getting sick and I prayed, the Lord spoke to my heart and showed me that I was going to walk through it and it was going to be painful. I knew it. I knew it wasn't going to be one of those healings, although I know God heals. I've seen people heal. But he said, you know, you're going to walk through this and I'm going to walk through it with you. But a rose, if you take a rose, it smells good, but when you crush it, it that fragrance can fill the whole room and it's the same way with olives you can't get all you know you have an olive and you have one thing but you crush it to get the oil out and the Lord allowed me to go through that because the fragrance of the ministry and the fragrance of him has come out through that and it, th as honestly as I know how to say it I've been playing music for the Lord for 28 years I have not seen ministry in anywhere compared to what in a way compared to, to what it's like now with the Elvad. Thank you. 